It has been almost a day since you sent out the dove, Noah. And still it has not returned. It will return. Already the daylight fails, and there is no sign of it. Patience, wife, patience, it will return. And with it bring a sign that the earth once more grows green and dry. And if it should not return, Noah? If it should not return? As we stood at the side of the ark, looking out over the water which covered the earth on every side, I thought back to how it was before. Before my father, Noah, my mother, my two brothers, Ham and Japheth, and I, Shem, the eldest son, together with our wives, together with the birds and beasts, came to be on the earth. I thought back to when all the earth was green and there were trees, when flowers of every color and hue filled the air with the perfume of their blossoms, when song filled the throats of the birds and the beasts of the earth roamed the land with their young. I remembered how it was with me when I was a youth and how it was with my brothers, how we lived in a land of peace and contentment. And I remembered how the world changed, how men began to live in sin and warred on each other, and how they slew the beasts and killed the birds that sang, not for food, but only for the sport of killing. Then it was that my father Noah, who was a peaceful man, grew troubled and wandered on the ways of man. For days would he leave our home and wander to the hills, to walk in solitude and consider the evil which had come upon the earth. I remembered the time when he stayed away longer than ever before, and the look on his face when at last he returned and gathered his family about him. What is it, my husband? There is a look on your face which I have not seen before. The words which I must say do not come easily. They are words which even I at first could not believe. Tell us, Father. The Lord has spoken to me this day. What? The Lord spoke? When I left to wander in the hills, my heart was greatly troubled, more than ever before. I walked aimlessly for hours, not knowing where I went. Then I grew tired and sat to rest. And as I rested, a great light shone down upon me, and a voice filled the air. The Lord's voice? It was the voice of the Lord, and it was troubled. He spoke of man and how he had grown evil in his ways, and how the evil spread like a plague. The Lord grieved because of what man had become, and he was filled with regret that he had made man on earth. And then the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created, and remove him from the face of the earth. Not only man, but beasts and creeping things and the birds of the air. Then we too shall die? No, not we, for we have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Did he say more, Father? He spoke of the violence and sin which is on the earth and of his desire to destroy all violence and sin and the earth with it. But if the earth will be destroyed, Noah... Then how shall we survive? He instructed me to build an ark. An ark? A boat of cypress wood, which we will seal with pitch inside and out to protect it from leaking. It will be 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in width, and 30 cubits in height. So large? We are to build it three stories high, and on each there will be many rooms. I do not understand, Father. Who is to go on the ark? We are to go, your mother and I, and you, and your brothers, and your wives. And we are to take with us, according to the Lord's instruction, two of every living thing of all flesh, one a male and one a female. Every living thing? Every kind of animal and crawling thing, and every bird. And there will be room on the ark for the food which will sustain us and the creatures with us. Now, my sons, let us take up our axes, for there is much work to be done. So it was that we took our axes and went into the forest and cut down the trees of Cyprus. When the bark was removed, we carried the wood from the forest and the building of the ark began. 
The days passed as we worked, my father, my brothers, and I, and slowly the ark took shape. And as we worked, others came to watch and to ridicule. Look, there it sits, just as I have told you. <laughs> oh, what manner of thing is it? It cannot be a palace, for there is no gate. <laughs> and it cannot be a chariot, for it has no wheels. <laughs> uh, come, uh, let us speak with Noah. It is possible that he could tell us what it is. <laughs> yes. uh, good day, Noah. Peace go with you, my friends. When we heard your hammering and the sound of your saws, Great was our curiosity to know the reason, to see for ourselves what you build both night and day. So you have come and you have seen. Oh, there are many wagers among us, Noah. What is it you build? It is an ark. An ark? Huh? A boat. Uh, a boat. <laughs> a, a, a boat. <laughs> you hear? Noah builds a boat. <laughs> Where there's no water, he builds a boat. <laughs> and, and, and how will you get it from this place on a sea of tears? <laughs> when the time is come, we will leave. Uh, you would sail on this boat, huh? Uh, come, Noah. Come, sit in the shade of yonder tree. You work too long in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> you do not laugh, Noah. I cannot laugh when the day of judgment is upon us. So, uh, the day of judgment is upon us. Oh, yes. <laughs> and how have you learned this? The Lord has told me. You spoke with the Lord. And, and what else did he say to you? It was he who instructed me to build the ark. And when it is done, I will go into the ark with my sons and the wives of the sons. And we will take with us all manner of living things. Two of each will we take. This was his command. Uh, uh, did he say also why you were to do this? He has looked at the evil ways of man, and he is not pleased. And because he is not pleased, he will destroy the earth. And man also will be destroyed. And you, Noah, will you also be destroyed? Whatsoever is on the ark will not be destroyed. But will sail to paradise while all else perishes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in truth, Noah, you are mad. <laughs> and we, my friends, waste time in idle talk with this madman. If the day of judgment is truly upon us, then let us drink and be merry while there is yet time. Huh? <laughs> but let us not ask Noah to join us in our merriment, for Noah speaks with the Lord, and the Lord bids him build an ark, <laughs> an ark which goes nowhere. <laughs> continued on the ark, and those who had come to laugh and ridicule returned again and again. But we shut our ears to their laughter, and at last the ark was finished. The seams were sealed with pitch, great quantities of food were stored in the place we had prepared, and it was time to gather up the birds and beasts and crawling things. Two by two they came, in an almost endless procession. The cattle came, and the deer, the leopard and the lion, the mule and the horse, the sheep and the goats, and the camels and the dogs. And on the ground crawled the snakes and other reptiles, and the sky was filled with all manner of birds. On and on they came, the clean and the unclean, and each took its place in the ark. And the day came when the last of the creatures of the earth was upon the ark. Then did my father Noah go once more into the forest. And when he returned, he called us all together on the ark. For again the Lord had spoken to him. We uh, are to remain on the ark for seven days. And then? And then, father? What then? And then a great rain will come upon the earth. And will continue for forty days and forty nights and every living thing on the earth will be destroyed. This is the vengeance of the Lord. And in 
seven days, it was as my father had said. It was as though the heavens had been opened and torrents of water poured down upon the earth. The rain continued in its fury, and the water rose up upon the land, and the ark was set free. Still higher rose the water, and the mountains were covered, and every living thing on earth was consumed, man and animals, creeping things, and the birds of the air. Forty days and forty nights, the rains fell, and the earth was no more. Only we and the creatures who were on the ark remained. Then there rose a heavy wind which drove back the rains. And at last, it was over. At the end of 40 days, my father Noah opened the window of the ark and released a raven which flew back and forth finding no place to perch. And he also released a dove, but it too returned for there was still no dryness on the earth. In a week's time, a second dove was released, and as the hours passed, this one did not return. As we stood at the side of the ark and silently searched the sky, we prayed for a sign. It was my mother who broke the silence. It has been almost a day since you sent out the dove. And still it has not returned. It will return. But see, already the daylight fails and there's no sign of it. Patience, wife, patience. It will return. And with it, bring a sign that the earth once more grows green and dry. And if it should not return, Noah? If it should not return? Have you so little faith? The Lord has brought us safely through the flood. He will not desert us now. Father, look. What is it? There, on the horizon. I thought I saw a movement. Are you certain? Yes. Wait. I, too, have seen something. See, there, where I point, it is a speck that rises and falls. Yes, I see it. Is it... Could it be? Yes, it comes this way. The dove returns. It was the dove which my father had sent out that morning. And in its mouth, it held an olive leaf. So we knew that at last the water was drying from the earth, and soon all would be as it had been. Slowly, the waters receded, and the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And we remained on the ark until the waters could no longer be seen. And when we figured our days on the ark, it was determined that it had been a month and 20 days more than a year since the first rains had begun to fall upon the earth. But now the rains had stopped, the waters were gone, and it was time to leave the ark. First were the creatures we had taken with us, the animals and the crawling things, and the birds that filled the air with their singing and the flapping of their wings. Once more they returned to reproduce their kind and to replenish the earth. We watched them go, and we knew it was good. And once more my father Noah left us, for the voice of the Lord called him. And when he returned, the lines of sadness were gone, and a smile was upon his face. The Lord has spoken to me, and his anger is gone. Not again will he curse the earth or destroy every living thing as he has done. Now there will be seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer. And we will eat of the flesh of all animals and the fish of the sea and all green herbs which grow in the ground. And there will be no more evil on the earth. There will be evil, my son. For the Lord has said that man creates his own evil from the days of his youth. But whoever sheds another's blood, be it man or beast, then he shall be punished according to God's law. So will it be from this time forth. Noah, there in the sky, a great ark of many colors. What does it mean? It is a sign, a token. The Lord had promised that never again will a flood destroy the earth. And lest we grow frightened when rains come and fear that he has again grown angry and will destroy all living things, 
A bow of color will arch the sky to remind us that he keeps his promise. Now, let us leave the ark and return once more to build our homes. For the floods are gone. All living creatures have returned whence they came. And peace is once more upon the land.